G'day mate, 40 here. It's inspired by my three month holiday down under, hiking all around Sydney. I need to get out here and start hiking Los Angeles. I think this is only my second time at Will Rogers National Park here, Pacific Palisades, looking out at the Pacific Ocean. I've been in Los Angeles for 29 years, and I've been here twice. And it's such a lovely bus ride too, right? Taking the bus in Santa Monica, Pacific Palisades, Bel Air, very different experience than taking like the subway. Wow, there is such an air of menace and just crazy criminal behavior going on in the subway. Wow, so I rode the Los Angeles subway for the first time nine days ago and uh, some pretty rough scary crazy types not, not a pleasant experience at all now a commuter bus from say West LA to downtown as long as there aren't too many stops that's pretty good all right, you get the you get the rapid bus all right that's pretty good but boy take a lot of stops down towards downtown Los Angeles, South Central Los Angeles, some uh, rather dicey, crazy, criminally inclined antisocial characters. But riding the bus, West LA, Beverly Hills, Bel Air, Pacific Palisades, perfectly pleasant experience. It's like taking the bus and the in Australia, the eastern suburbs of Sydney. Very nice experience. Right now we're in the big city of Los Angeles. And I just finished season four of Babylon Berlin. Wow. Almost ready to buy the novel. But uh, that's a great show. I hear it's one of those rare TV shows or movies that's better than the book. Babylon Berlin's got it all. It's got Jews, it's got degeneracy, it's got Nazis. It's got German efficiency and German corruption. Everything in Babylon Berlin. So the first three seasons are already on Netflix, very much worth a watch. Just incredible acting, just incredibly compelling from beat to beat. It's not bad being in the middle of the big city of Los Angeles, right? You've got this fantastic national park, a perfectly pleasant bus ride to and from. Now you drive a car, $12 parking fee, but take the bus, no worries mate. The type of people you meet here, very, very nice, just the best. Hikers are the best people, aren't they folks? They bring their goodness with them on the hike. Hiking brings out their best, it encourages the best. It develops the best. It's like you're on a golf course. Like please and thank you and how are you? And have a nice day and smiles and just good manners all around. Don't meet a lot of super predators out here. Now there are some mountain lions. So you encounter a mountain lion out here. I, I saw the sign. The important thing is like raise your hands above your head and make some noise. Frighten them away. Good old mountain lions. We love our mountain lions in LA, don't we folks? We got the best mountain lions here. And they gotta be really quick and agile to get you know across the freeways. So you live in LA, you've got 
you got snow an hour away, you got the beach 10 minutes away, you got the Santa Monica Mountains here, and we would have had snow up here a week ago. We had snow down to a thousand feet, we had snow flurries at the Hollywood sign. And this is just, it's like dipping into the mikvah of nature. Right? It's just very renewing, refreshing, reinvigorating, revivifying, reconstituting. It's all here. It's nice to get away from computer screens, from the sturm and s stress of uh, doing a live stream, just to enjoy, you know, a leisurely recorded video you know, with a high quality DJI Gimbal 2 with its external microphone. And this feels like Australia. So Babylon Berlin, the uh, protagonist, the good guy, Gideon, the detective, he's, uh, he's also quite a flawed character, develops drug addiction, and then the second lead is a woman who works as a prostitute by night and a police detective by day. And there are some tabloid journalists, some communists, some Nazis, betrayal, children living on the streets. You got psychoanalysis, medication, the administering of speed, administering of other drugs. Oh, and the Zeppelin. Damn, the Zeppelin's amazing. So this character gets a phone call from Berlin on Friday night, God forbid. Here's a phone call, realizes he needs to go to Berlin. He books a Zeppelin. He flies on the Zeppelin from New York to Berlin. I mean, that's amazing. I gotta research that. Like, how long would that take? And I mean, the facilities were top class. I mean, much better facilities than, than we have when you fly economy now. I mean, when you're flying on the, flying on the Zeppelin air, airship, that's really flying. So just imagine jumping on a Zeppelin in 1930, New York, taking the Zeppelin to Berlin. I gotta watch some more videos and do some more reading on life on the Zeppelin. I mean, this thing would just go over oceans. And yeah, there was a major disaster. What was it, about 1938 in New Jersey, where the Hindenburg exploded. But uh, one of my fantasies is just to be floating on a balloon over the ocean. Imagine getting into a Zeppelin. How do you beat the winds? <laughs> like, like when you're flying to Australia, you're flying against the wind. Did they take, did they take Zeppelins from Europe to Australia in the 1930s? I gotta know. I guess if you're going with the wind, you know, air travel by Zeppelin is possible, but I just don't see those little motors being able to successfully navigate against the wind. But they had really posh headquarters. Flying on a Zeppelin airship. Sounds tops, mate. A lot of, you know, a lot of new technology going on in Babylon, Berlin. So there's this one guy who's convinced that he's going to fly to the moon. He's going to be the first man to land on the moon. And so under post-World War I regulations, right, Germany's only allowed very limited armed forces, but they're allowed you know, civilian experimentation you know, to create an aircraft, spacecraft, but they can just rejigger the spacecraft instead of hitting the moon, they can just reprogram it to hit Paris, London, or New York instead. And so the, the Germans invented the first ICBM, intercontinental ballistic missiles. 
and then we got their top scientists after World War II and they led America's space program. But to see uh, the, the beginning of this innovation is portrayed in season four of Babylon Berlin is pretty cool. German technology, German engineering. If you want to see Jewish engineering, then uh, look at what happened to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. <laughs>